My name is Joanne Bolt, and I am obsessed with all things business and being unapologetic about the life and career you want to have. Is it all easy, friends? No. But together, we'll tackle it all with simple strategies and expert advice from industry besties. Money, marketing, mindset. Consider this your girlfriend's guide to business, and ladies, it's an open playbook. So grab a glass of wine, curl up on the couch with your fuzzy slippers on, and let's see how good it can really be, because happy hour is started here on The B Word. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to The B Word. I've got a super special guest here with me today. A lady I met last month in February when I took the bull by the horns and went on a mastermind by myself, completely not sure what I was going to do and honestly not sure what I was going to get out of it, but I got placed. Um, Thank you, Lindsay Schwartz, for actually telling everyone where they had to sit the first day. I think that that really eases people into masterminds, but I got sat on the back row with this little spitfire named Tanya, and I think that I don't know. We are like soul sisters from somewhere along the way. And it was an immediate connection right there. So Tanya, start off, tell everyone a little bit about yourself, who you are, what do you do for a living? Cause that's one of the funniest things to me. Um, and then we're going to dive <laughs> into a little bit of our experience from the mastermind. Okay, great. Uh, well, thank you for having me on. I am based out of Gilbert, Arizona, and I own a couple of uh, home service companies. So I am preparing to sell one of them, which is a junk removal company. Um, but I run on a day-to-day basis, a septic and commercial wastewater pumping and installation business. I know that's a mouthful. So we really like just pump shit for a living. And then we yeah, install and shit. design those septic tanks. <laughs> we do epic shit every day. And that is our that is our value statement. It's on all of our shirts. It's everything. But it really does mean stuff to us. When you're in an industry like this, you got to have fun with it. You know, it's one of those yeah. things where you have to have a fun atmosphere to attract people to come here and work because it's not something that people are like, oh, this is what I want to do when I grow up, you know? Right. Um, so we have but your a kindergarten really awesome teacher ask you fun. if you what you wanted to do when you grew up. And some people said teacher or firefighters. I'm pretty sure you didn't say I would like to pump shit. <laughs> I did not. I did not. But I am a woman that is in a heavily dominated by men industry. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a superpower. I walk into that room and no one suspects for two seconds that I'm an owner of one of these companies. So it's a really awesome place to be in. And there's huge opportunity in the skilled trades fields right now. It's like one of those biggest parts of our industry world where people aren't following up. Like for years, people had companies and it was like, well, grandpa started this and then dad ran it and then I'm going to run it and I'm going to do this. And all the kids now are like, I don't want anything to do with that. Mm -mm. So there's huge opportunity for not only making really good money, but being able to work when you need and want to in those industries where you're able to help people because the service need is not going away anytime soon. No, it's not. All right. So let's fast forward to the mastermind that we both attended. And you, you and I were talking before we hit the record button on one of the biggest takeaways from it was just being in the room in and of itself. So I'll I'll let you dive in a little bit more. I don't want to tell your story for you, but. Oh gosh. I, I was petrified for like a week beforehand, like seriously every night before I would like sit and talk to my husband and I would like tears would just start rolling down my cheeks. Like, I'm so scared to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. It was not leaving behind what I was leaving behind to go. I was petrified to be the only walking into a room of women I didn't know. It was very intimidating. Um, I've met Lindsay a few times prior to that. She's always so warm and welcoming, but still intimidating because I just, I look up to her. I I think she's fantastic. Um, I knew there would be very powerful women in the room. Um, I think a lot of us end up getting into circles especially our kinds of personalities yeah where we're the biggest personality in the room oh yeah and we're often that person that people come to to talk to us and we're the boss and we're the leader and we're comfortable in that spot 
because we've done it for so long. But to walk into a room where you got a whole bunch of bosses and a whole bunch of leaders in there and a whole bunch of ladies making really big moves, it's not people looking at you saying, oh, damn, look what you're doing. That's so awesome. They're looking at you too as like a peer-to-peer level instead of this, if that makes any sense. It's so intimidating because you're like, do I... Do I stand up to these? Like, do I stand up with these people? Am I at the same level of these people? Being not the boss in the room, but with other bosses is really making you look at your vulnerable spots. I think like when you're a business owner, you're nobody's really checking in on you. Mm-mm. But when you walk into a room, if you're in the right one, you've got now a whole bunch of people that aren't trying to boss you around, but want to cheer you on. So you better give them some shit to cheer you on about. And so it was like walking into instant accountability with all these other women. And it really makes you have to stand up and do things. I've never been so determined to st- to get going on the things that I've been working on for years <laughs> as I have when I left that room. I And I can second, I was actually really nervous probably until midway through day two of the thing. And that is a very odd feeling for me. And it's a very uncomfortable space for me to be in because I'm like you, I'm used to walking in the room and semi-owning it. Um, and, and I found mm-hmm. it the mastermind. I was like, oh, I want to say something, but am I going to sound dumb? Am I going to, you know, do I have the right? Have I, do I have the receipts for this? Like, am I good enough? Am I, I don't know. I just felt like I kind of curled inward, you know, inward for a little while and then found my voice again and, and started to speak up. But for me, it was like, oh my gosh, it was so eye opening Mm -hmm. that I've always thought I was surrounding myself by the five people I needed to be around until I walked in that room and discovered Oh no, I was surrounding myself by the five people that made me comfortable. And it's really good to surround yourself by the people who make you uncomfortable. Absolutely. And I think to add to that, you and I have very big, bold personalities. We like to say shit. Can I say that? Oh yeah, (laughs) go ahead. (laughs) Well, it's like a shit and fuck and everything else in there. And it was seriously funny because like, as soon as one of us start, I can't even remember somebody, which one of anyone in the room that finally cracked the code that it was okay to cuss. It was kind of almost like for me, it was like, oh, Take I can be nice self. Yeah. Like it's okay. I think we appeal to a different set of women that are looking for mentorship and looking for that I can climb to the next level by being authentically who we are with those big, bold personalities. Because I can't speak for you, but for me, so many times, like I walked into that room and made my personality so much smaller than it was for the whole first day. Shit, we sat next to each other and didn't say shit to each other till halfway through the day because we were both scared and you're kind of like minimize this big personality, which is so silly at the aftermath of all of, of that week. I was like, why? I know what to do better next time and don't shrink myself. I think I, I think Lindsay Lindsay sent out an email this morning. Did you read that? That was talking about like how many of you shrink yourselves down to make other people feel comfortable around you. And mm-hmm. I know I have done that forever. And as soon as I got into that room, I and got to know when people started talking, I was like, oh my God, I can be myself. This is something that is welcomed in this format and in this world. Well, and I found so many years, I think we learn to shrink ourselves because as women with big personalities, oftentimes you can get perceived as being a bitch. You can get called that Mm -hmm. because you scare people or they just don't understand how you can be so forward thinking and so unapologetic in what you're doing. And I think I shared on that first day of the mastermind, the thing that holds me back is I find myself apologizing because I don't want to offend or I don't want to be too big of a personality you know, so, so that people walk away. And I walked away from the master mind saying, um, yeah, no, I will be unapologetic from this point moving forward because it's all I really know how to be. And if I have to apologize, I'm not like, I'm not being mean. I'm not bringing into the world what they need to hear from me. Yeah. 
you're never going to be able to, I took out of that, like you're, I'm never going to connect authentically with the people that I need to connect with, whether I need them or they need me, if I'm not being a hundred percent unapologetically myself. Mm -hmm. I think that many times we think about the personal development world, mindset work, you know, anything, even work-related things that we have to, there's a prim and proper way to act and behave. Yeah. Sorry, that's not me. And we we don't behave that way. I grew up in the construction industry. <laughs> like I do filter <laughs> in comparison to what it is everywhere, you know, that I work in. Um, but those are the women that I want to work with. And those are the women that I appeal to. And those are the women that need me to be my authentic self. If it's something that, you know, I is offensive to you, then you're not my people. And that's okay because that's there okay. is someone yeah. for you that will connect with you on the level that you need to be connected with. Yeah. I think that's that's something I learned in that room. Like just watching the dynamic of how just intricately different everybody was, even though they all had the same big goal, everyone was going to appeal to someone else. And there are how many billion people on this planet? Like there right. are the reach you can have now with people to make an impact especially personal development wise is worldwide. There are plenty of people to go around. It is not something where so many people say, well, if I appeal to this person or this person, I'm going to miss out on these people. You want to miss out on those people because they're not your people. Yeah. They're not and meant to hear from me, me or not that. meant to pour into them. So that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think the other thing that you and I have talked a lot about is those seasons of life and how how we can bring people into them and, and learn to let go of other people as we transition. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, I talked about this on, on my podcast a couple of weeks ago too, about like the transitioning of your like friendships. Minds, like mine. <laughs> it was such a good conversation because I think that's, this is why I wanted to talk about this so much today is the transitioning of friendships as you continue to grow professionally and with personal development. There are people that just don't serve me anymore. And you hang on to them because you're like, but we've been friends since we were five. That's great. You yeah, can but... love them from here. But you, this time you're spending with someone that's not contributing positively to your life, which a lot of times they're like old party friends or things like that, that you're, you know, time and a place. But right now, this is what I'm focused on. And I have this much time. I have five children. I'm married. I have two businesses that I'm running. I have a podcast. I'm like, I have time for work friends that are you develop genuine relationships from. Like I instantly felt a connection to you. Finding those women that you can share life and business with and not segregating those two groups of friends anymore. That's what I want to find in my life. And I think there's so many women that are at our age and, and step in life that they're looking for the same thing, but they don't know how to say it or they're scared to ask for it. Well, and I think the critical thing here, and it was a theme for us at the Mastermind, and I know amongst the group, it has continued to be a theme that we text each other all the time is just get in the room. Because... Mm -hmm. If, if you hadn't have taken the moment to get in that room and I hadn't have clicked the button to buy the mastermind ticket and get in the room, even though I really still am not sure why I did, something just made me do it. Those connections would never happen. And so when you get in the rooms where you have an expectation of what you're getting out of it, I think you walk in and find those, you know, sometimes the wrong people because you walk in with that expectation of what you think you should get out of it. Thus, you attract those people. But when you walk in the rooms where you have no expectations and you're just there to learn and grow and see what you can find, like, I think that's when the magic happens. Absolutely. I, I remember going before we went to that mastermind and my husband kept asking me, well, what are you going to do while you're there? I'm like, I don't know. There's a morning session and an afternoon session. He's like, so you signed up for something and paid all that money and you don't know what you're doing. I'm like, we're going to build community. Yeah. That's what okay. it's called. That's what I went there for was this playbook on how to be able to set up my online community stuff outside of just the physical thing that we have right now. We didn't even talk about that. I know. That is the funniest thing It wasn't thing even me. about that. We never even opened the workbook for that Lindsay had created for the mastermind. I think she instantly knew 
that group that came together, we just needed, we needed more. We needed something different. We were all leveling up and we let, we let the conversation flow in the direction that we needed. And that, that is when the magic happens because we didn't need that workbook. We didn't need that workbook. We needed each other. Mm -hmm. Amen. Before that workbook meant anything to any of us. And it really didn't dawn on me until I got home and I was going through that workbook. And I'm like, if we would have sat and looked at just this workbook, do you know how many awesome things wouldn't have happened? Yeah. I would have left that mastermind going, okay, it was just another thing I went to. And maybe I met a couple of great people, but when we all got vulnerable and opened up as to what we really needed, that's that's when the money was worth it. That's when everything started clicking. And I think there's not one person that walked out of that room. There's only what, 25 of us, which is a great size that would say anything any different. Yes. Oh yeah. And it was, it was beautiful that it was so small because I know that they were talking about, we talked about it too, that they thought that this event was going to be so much bigger. It wouldn't have been what it was if there was so many people there. So that's one of the most important things. If you're a woman that's on a journey, that's building stuff like this, there is beauty in starting small with things because we got to experience that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even if you've got five people in a room, that is, that's even five times more likely to connect than it was in a room of 25. You know, it's important that you keep showing up. When I left there, all I wanted to do was create rooms that women could go and experience what we got to experience there. Me too. That's the driving force for me. I don't even give a shit what we talk about. I just need to get you all in the room (laughs) and get you to unleash your real personalities and realize that a lot of times as women, I know for me, I was always like, I don't have a lot of girlfriends because I work in this male industry and I just have better camaraderie with males and blah, blah, blah. It was all bullshit. First of all, I was too scared to walk into a room where there could be females that could work with me. Yeah. Because it really makes you start looking at yourself. And it's one of the scariest things to do at first, but one of the most rewarding things you can ever do for yourself. I agree. I've actually got one of those rooms. Um, I'm calling it the unapologetic entrepreneur. And it's the first of May, because if I can give space to women to figure it out like I did, oh my gosh, what you know, what are we unleashing upon the world if we help people figure that out? Yeah. Where we stop yeah. competing against each other as females and start collaborating with each other and holy crap, what we can do. We have, as females, we have been able to figure out so much shit. And I don't realize why this topic of supporting each other, oh, I get mad passionate about this, isn't something that people don't just fucking do already. Like, why do you have to be convinced that this is a good idea? I don't know. Like, you're you're around women that tear you down and women that build you up. And which one makes you feel better? Like, don't be this person. Like, yeah. it's not a difficult thing to do. But, you know, I think it's hard so sometimes to let go of the who we've been around or, you know, we want to bring them with us because we have these visions and we don't realize a right. lot of times that those people aren't building us up and they are actually inadvertently stopping us from getting to where we want to go. And I think it's fear that stops us from getting in the room because we are intimidated or because we don't bring a buddy with us or because we just don't know what, you know, we don't like our outfits. I mean, it it can be that simple for girls. It really can. Like, I don't like my outfit, so I'm not going to show up today. Yep. And something that I have had to learn too, and this even goes with my spouse too, my dream is not their dream. Mm. And as much as I want to have a partner in this that I can chat with and I can do this with, it's not always your friends. It's not always your spouse. It could be a complete stranger that you meet in a room that now just became your business BFF that you can bounce shit off of because you two have the same goals. So instead of trying to make someone in your life already be a part of what you're working on, seek the people that are already doing that. They don't even have to live there. You're how many thousands of miles away from me but I know that like as soon as we get started with stuff even listening to your podcast like balling on a budget and all this other stuff I was like damn what did I think of that stuff like there's so many things that we can pick up from each other and now I've just found 24 more women that I can learn from 
Oh my God. And that you had a connection from, and many of them have podcasts and many of them are putting on events. And I wish I could go to Jenna's event, but we were going to growth day already. So like, I just, Oh wait, hang on. That's okay. I'm going to Jenna's event. You're going to growth day. So you take notes for me and I'll take notes for you. And then we'll just compare. (laughs) I think that's perfect. See, you got to have people like this that you can do stuff like that. Right. With, you like know? we'll have a daily like, download hey, this is on what on was so FaceTime. amazing. Yes. This is what was so amazing with stuff because I can sit, I have sat and talked to my husband so many times like, blah, 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 I'm talking about building this community. I'm talking about doing this and this and this. And he's like, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. great, babe. He has no idea what I'm talking about. And bless his heart, like he's trying to listen and understand and be supportive, and he is, but he doesn't understand what it is. So I can come to you and be like, I need some help editing this podcast, or can you listen to this and tell me where I need to fix some stuff? And I know you're going to be honest with me and tell me these things. And those are the people that you need in your business life and in your personal development that will shoot you straight and not just love you and say, oh, it's great when you're like, I know it's not. Yeah. (laughs) The people that pat you you on the head and they're like, no, you're just being too judgmental on yourself. When you're like, no, I really do think this is shit. Like, help me fix it. Yeah. What do I need to do here? What's your input on this? And it's never taken like, Joanne's being so mean to me. You know, like I appreciate that so much. And I need a personality like you to be able to do that. Because when people sugarcoat shit, I'm like, you're not helping me. And then I just, it leads to a whole nother level of frustration. Well, then you don't even things. respect so find your, what they're telling you because you know that they're sugarcoating yeah. it. Yes. Find your, find a, a business buddy that you can, you can do those things with. And you start by getting into a room to be able to find that person. You know, here's the the other funny thing. And I don't, I don't know if you have discovered this in your creative um, aspect of the business since you came home from the mastermind, but I love my podcast. I mean. It is my baby. It is probably the funnest thing I do in my in my world since I quit doing real estate. And I still struggled week after week with coming up with content. Like there was this mm-hmm. block in my brain, right? Um, you know, what can I talk about? What should I talk about? What's helpful? What's not? I mean, I only do 15 to 17 minute episodes. So it's not like I had to, you know, write out these long things, but I still struggled with coming up with content. And I found myself a lot of times recording like the day the podcast was supposed to drop because I was just brain blocked. And then Mm -hmm. I went to the mastermind and I got around all the other women and their creative energies really sparked for me. I have got a list a mile and a half long now. I am ahead of myself with batching. I've got enough to do three episodes a week, which was a goal of mine because some of them are subscriber only episodes. And it's just, uh-huh. it keeps coming. It's like that that wall crumbled for me when I finally looked at it through the lens of, of other people I respected and got that validation from them that I'm doing, I'm on the right path. Do you think that your creative, because you seem to be a very creative person to me, do you think your creative block was a little bit of imposter syndrome? Probably. Being able to put them out? Probably. I think I ask you that. I think you probably just nailed one it. Of the, that was one of the hugest things for me when I came back was you do know your shit. And all these other women are here that will back you up knowing that you know what you're talking about. You know, yeah. I, one of the biggest things that I have been so, so critical of, I've had four different home service companies. Two of them have not turned out great. But who better to learn shit from than the person that has had one that didn't turn out great and then built another one that's working awesome. You know what I mean? Like for things like that, for me, I was always like, but if they know about what happened with my other business, then, then like, first of all, who the hell is they really knew? And second of all, like I have a different lens than just somebody that's been partying and succeeding the whole entire time, you know? Um, also, I think the drawback too was, I I don't know who I'm, like, is there, I don't know how to say this, 
like your specific audience that you're trying to talk to. I'm trying so much to streamline it like yours is like just to real estate. And I'm like just to home service professionals or skilled trade people. But I realized going to that mastermind, like there's so many things just mentally that in professional development we've had to do to get to where we're at in our businesses that appeal to people in any industry, any yes. sex, wherever the hell they're at in the world. I don't need to just talk to the specific people. Yeah. I you agree. Know? Like I thought I, I had to niche down myself so much. So much. It, it like handcuffed me and I'm still yes. niched down. I still speak to women entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. but when I took those handcuffs off of just, you know, just saying it in the real estate terms, I think that's also where some of my mind block just went wide open. Cause the reality is if you listen to the last six months of podcast episodes, I rarely actually mention real estate. And so it was like, oh, wait, I'm already doing this. I didn't even know I was. Yeah. And I think we got stuck in like, I know about skilled trade stuff. I know that industry really well. And that's where my comfort and my experience comes from. You know, real estate really well, which is great because we're going to appeal to those people heavily, probably oh, yeah. way more so than somebody else's because they're like, oh, shit. Well, she's in the home service industry or she was a real estate professional and we can use that experience and we can talk about it, but we don't need to pigeonhole ourselves to only speaking to those people because there are so many people that can relate that just because they don't work in that industry, they relate with us. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that we gave ourselves enough credit for who we are and the boldness that we stand for. And I love your your stuff with the unapologetic entrepreneur. Like so many of us are so good at apologizing for fucking everything. Yeah. And we don't need to be like that. And we're going to appeal to those people too. Oh my God. So I think that just like totally like lights creativity on fire. I love that you say you had lists because I have calendars that are already full of Here's all of my ideas, my blogs, my everything is all planned all the way through June already. I know. And it it's so freeing as an entrepreneur who spends a lot of time creating content that now I'm not worried about what the content is going to be. It's just a matter of like, just execute. Like here it is. Just, just get from point A to point Z in your process for every one of these topics because... And oh, by the way, there's no way I'll make it through all the topics I've already written out because now that the creativity is flowing, I know I'm going to just keep adding to it. <laughs> Which is a great problem to have. It is. All right. So what that. is up next for Tanya? Ooh. So um, I also have just fallen in love with the creative process of the podcast. I have a podcast. Um, it's called Ladies Kicking Ass. Um, that. And that appeals to everybody you know, yes. <laughs> that, that embodies those words. That room was full of ladies kicking ass. And I think that's where I realized, like, you're not just talking to home service professionals. Mm -hmm. You're talking to every single one of these women in this room. And nobody else was in there that was a home service professional. So yeah. that's where like the creative juices for me have just been crazy. Like my family's like, why are you in the office all the time? Like, uh, this is so fun. Because <laughs> it doesn't it is seem fun like again. work to me. It's the creative process. Because I was like you too. I'd be like recording a podcast and then hurry and type in my show notes while it's all syncing together so I could launch it the same day. So um I'm super excited to have even more wonderful guests. A lot of people from the mastermind have signed up to be on the podcast. I'm sure they have with yours too. Yeah. So it's fun to bring these other voices in to the community that we have. Um, I am also putting an event together so that I can start opening that door for other women um, at a location that we do is a co-working location here in Gilbert, Arizona. Um, and that will be going off in May, which I'm excited for that. We're going to do just a monthly thing with that. Um, and I'm really working hard on putting my coffee table book together that I committed to doing in the mastermind. Oh, I cannot wait. Tell everyone the concept of the coffee table book, because I think it's phenomenal. So I love 
coffee table books. And I don't even know if people call them that anymore, but that's what I call them. <laughs> the cute little books that you can put out that people can just look. I mean, I know what you're talking like, about. So yeah. Li- yeah. Little dose stories of stuff. There's so many of these. There's this idea came to me because I read these stories to my daughter at night and they're called rebel girls, rebel women. And it's stories of everyday women that made a mark in women progressing women's history. And I think it's so incredibly important that we teach our daughters these things and they can see these women that are making a difference because our daughters look at this stuff and they're like, well, yeah, of course we can vote. Well, yeah, of course we don't, you know, can do this and we can do this. And of course we can own a company. Like my daughter just thinks that's how shit works. And it, there have been so many women that have paid a massive price for us to be able to enjoy these freedoms and for Mm -hmm. them to be able to do that too. And I think I'm, very passionate about showing our younger generation what these incredible women, their mothers, their grandmothers, their aunts are doing to make things possible for them. So my concept for coffee table book is the women that I interview on my podcast, I'm going to give them first opportunity to be able to be featured in the coffee table book. Um, It will be a one page, just photo profile, you know, like just a headshot profile shot of them. And then a story about what they have done in their life and how they've made a difference and what the meaning of ladies kick and ass means to them. Um, I ask everyone on my podcast that question at the end, and it is so, I just want to put it together. In I like, can't wait. I have this grand vision for when we roll this book out that all of these little comments will just be put together in just a sound bite of this is what ladies kicking ass means to them. This is what this community means to people. This is a door that's open for you to come and be genuinely unapologetically exactly who you are and it gives someone a platform to be able to tell their story you don't need to be popular you don't need to be rich and famous to be able to make it in this book you just need to be making a difference somewhere that is impacting women and our younger generation into realizing the power that women hold and if harnessed properly what they could do with it to make this world such a better place oh my god okay so because I, I mean, you know where I'm going to go with this probably. What's your first commitment and what can I hold you accountable to? Oh, um, well, May. You hear my dog's my- stomach, by the way, growling like Georgia is sitting at my feet. I'm like, what are you doing down there? No, but mine's sitting right outside the door. I had to put him out because every time a car drives by, he barks, but he follows me everywhere. He's probably losing his mind. I can hear him just rubbing against the door. Um. My first thing you can hold me accountable for is when we do our first date in May. Um, This is when I'm going to announce that about the book. So people that are there can have an opportunity to sign up to be on the podcast and then be put into this first edition of our coffee table book, which I am planning to launch by the end of November. Okay. You can do it. Which I know I can do it. And I want to have 60 ladies in the first one. So uh, it doesn't have to be something that's huge and gigantic, but it's something that every one of those 60 ladies can be very proud of that they were a part of. And I hope to just be able to grow it and start making volumes of it so that every year there's a new ladies kicking ass book that comes out with 60 fresh new faces of women that are kicking ass. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to hold you accountable to announcing it in May. And I'm going to keep on your ass to actually have that thing out by November because I know I want a copy of it signed by you um, on my coffee table. That would be awesome. And I want your pretty face in it. So (laughs) we'll do that next on Thursday. Yeah, absolutely. When we record again, (laughs) when we swap podcasts. Um, Okay, so for all of my audience that wants to follow you, obviously ladies kicking ass is a podcast. I know you've got an Instagram page. What, what way do you prefer for people to support you in the digital world? 
Um, definitely Instagram ladies kicking ass. Um, I, that's my favorite place to post about the community. If you want to get to know me more, um, I'm also on Instagram at Tanya Wilson kicking ass. Um, and then my website is Tanya Wilson dot page, and it has all the information about my businesses, the podcast and all the other good stuff we have going on. That's where we'll put announcement and opportunity for people to sign up to be on the podcast so that they can. And uh, be one of those wonderful women that we talk about in the book. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for being a part of my show today, Tanya. And obviously, thanks for just pouring into my world in the way that you have. And I know that we've got a lot of cool stuff to be continued. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. I adore you. 